Have you ever noticed how it's the transitions between tasks that sometimes feel the hardest and waste the most time? Trying to shift your mind out of that conversation from the meeting you were just in and into writing that new content piece or working on that new design can feel like it takes Herculean levels of effort, right? That's why in this video, I wanna teach you about the five mind modes and how they can make it so much easier to plan and actually execute the work you envisioned each day. What I'm about to teach you is drawn from the energy element of the Freedom Evolution Method, where I go in depth into how to leverage the five mind modes to ensure you're minimizing that transition friction and maximizing your productive potential every single day. Now, what happens for most exhausted entrepreneurs is their days and weeks are kind of a bit of a chaos. Meetings are sprinkled everywhere, errands, kids' commitments popping up throughout. And somewhere in between all of that, we're trying to squeeze in the most important creative work that actually moves our business forward. I once heard Michael Hyatt, author of Free to Focus and Your Best Year Ever, speaking about front stage, backstage, and offstage activities. And essentially, he was drawing a distinction between billable work, administrative work, and everything else that's not work-related. Now, his recommendation was to chunk your time according to these types of categories. And while I really do understand where he was going with this idea, I don't think that approach goes far enough. That strategy focuses on the purpose or the outcome of the work, whereas the five mind modes that I'm about to teach you are focused on the mental or energetic space you need to be in to get certain types of work done. In other words, I wanna help you optimize for what goes into the action that makes doing that action easier regardless of what purpose the action itself serves. The reality is that having a meeting, whether that's a client call or a team meeting or just a conversation with your kid's teacher, all require your mind to be in a communication space or what I call connection mode. Now, as many introverts know, having those conversations sometimes means you're flipping on an internal switch that allows you to be ready for that conversation, right? So what if we don't make you have to flip that switch on and off all day long, all week, all the time? When you optimize for these mind modes, you're reducing your mental transitions and you're planning your days to ensure that you're doing your most challenging work when you're mentally at your best. That is when you will truly start improving your personal productivity and make life feels so much easier. So let's dive in and give you an overview of the five mind modes and how to recognize them in your own daily life. Now I've already introduced you to the first one, connection mode. This includes any task or activity where you're connecting or interacting with others. It could be professional or personal. And if you're an introvert, connection mode activities might feel really draining. If you're more of an extrovert, they might be energizing. But regardless, talking and engaging with other people takes a particular kind of mental energy, doesn't it? That is connection mode. Mind mode number two, restorative mode. These are all the actions you do to restore yourself. Sleep, eating, showering, exercise, whatever your personal hobbies or preferred activities are, we all need a fair amount of restorative mode time throughout every single day in order to function well the rest of the time. If you've been flirting with burnout, your quickest road to recovery is to work more restorative time into your daily rhythms. Mind mode number three, get it done, or as I sometimes call it, tick it off mode. This mind mode includes all of those low mental intensity actions. It's when you're doing the mindless tasks, anything from doing the laundry, the dishes, running errands, checking emails, any of those administrative tasks that are kind of repetitive or formulaic. These are the kinds of tasks that you can almost do on autopilot, which require very little brain power to accomplish. 
If you're familiar with Stephen Covey's metaphor of the big rocks, then this stuff is the sand and water that should filter in and around everything else. Mind mode number four, creative mode. Now, creative mode tasks are exactly the opposite of those get it done, tick it off tasks. These are the high mental intensity activities that usually require significant, often sustained focus for an extended period of time, like writing, coding, or any kind of creative work. Have you ever started writing or any kind of creative task and then gotten pulled away, feeling that resistance to stopping or the mental friction and challenge of trying to get back into that mental mode again? Then you've experienced the power and that consuming nature of creative mode work. Creative mode tasks often require a mental on-ramp and an off-ramp to transition in and out of them. And it can be very jarring to drop them when you're in the flow. Mind mode number five, reflective mode. This can be a similarly consuming mode, but rather than focusing deep into doing, reflective mode is more about stepping back and planning. It's zooming out mentally to take a wider view of your day, week, season, or even life, rather than just diving deep and doing as you do with creative mode, it's more about opening up and intentionally widening your awareness and your view. Now you're in reflective mode whenever you're planning your day, your week, or a major project. Now, honestly, while we don't need a ton of this mind mode on a daily basis, I do believe that many entrepreneurs neglect or dedicate far too little time to this mode in a given week, which can create costly, wasteful challenges down the road because priorities were unclear, planning was ignored in favor of messy action, and work ends up needing to be repeated because it was ill-defined in the first place. Reflective mode provides the mental space to clarify, confirm, and build confidence around our decisions and our actions. There you have it, the five mind modes. Connection, restorative, get it done, creative, and reflective. In the Freedom Evolution Method, I go deep into ways to use these modes to plan your day and your week and reduce the transition friction in your daily life. But here is the simplest strategy to start using these modes immediately. Chunk your tasks according to mode. If you already have a couple of meetings that happen every week on Thursday afternoons, then maybe you make Thursdays your connection days and you avoid scheduling meetings on Tuesdays, which become your creative days. Or perhaps you're aware that your power time, the time of day when you're most mentally sharp, is from roughly 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So you can actively protect that time from getting swallowed by get it done or connection type tasks, reserving it primarily for creative or reflection mode actions. Doing those tasks when your mind is in the best shape to undertake them will make them much easier to complete quickly. Now, obviously there are a ton more strategies related to these mind modes, using them with your ultradian pulse, which is a biological rhythm that every one of us drives your mental attention, or identifying your personal chronotype based on scientific research that throws out the outdated concept of early birds and night owls, and instead allows you to understand your best time of day for creative mode tasks, and so much more. If you're ready to learn about what you can do to get out of the exhausted entrepreneur trap, then you wanna head over to chosencourse.com forward slash I want more and take a look at my free Road to Inspired Action video series to learn how you can stop feeling like an exhausted entrepreneur every day and start becoming the visionary CEO you've always dreamed of being. It's your life, freedom lover. Ready to get started?